Hello people of Twitch and YouTube. Uh, I'll be uploading this video to YouTube after we're done. Um, in case there's any drop frames or I cut out, you'll be able to watch the whole video on YouTube without any interruptions. Um, today we're going to be making some holiday cards. I have here a lovely sheet of 12 by 12 inch paper covered in snowflakes. It is the Paper Studio. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Keep hitting the camera here. But the Paper Studio. I bought the, these pieces of paper at Hobby Lobby on sale. And uh, I really do like their sales on paper products when they have them. So this is what the finished card is going to look like. Uh, it's just fairly simple. Um, as you can see, we have a square cut out with rounded corners with a snowflake stamped on it. And then it's got some powder or glitter on top. This one has uh, uh, a special kind of pearlescent powder on it. And then the inside is just going to be two very light pink snowflakes to kind of match the paper on the outside with a jingle all the way in green and a, a brush pen tree stamp. Uh, we're going to brush pen at the stamp, so it takes a little bit longer to do, but it turns out really cool. And then on the back, which I haven't done yet, it's going to be handmade by, and then I'll sign my name. But, yeah, so that's what these are going to end up looking like. We're starting out with the paper. Um, these come in packs of 50, 50 cards and 50 envelopes, and they come flat. So you have to fold each one. They are creased in the middle. I don't know how well you can see that, so they're pretty easy to fold. Um, as you can see here, I've gotten a bunch of them done already. I didn't want to spend an hour putting cards on paper. I thought that might be a little uh, boring for everybody to watch, so I did get a bunch finished ahead of time. Um, so finished card. We're just going to set that over there. So we'll start by putting these on the paper. Now some people use double-sided tape. You can get them in a variety of formats. Some come in thin strips, some come in thicker strips. Um, and what you just do is get them as close to the edge as possible. And then you adhere it to the paper. One of the reasons I like using 12 by 12 inch pieces of paper is because four cards fit per sheet. So it's easy to whip through making these fairly quickly. Um, I actually don't use double-sided tape all that often. I use rubber cement. So you just have to be in a well-ventilated area when you use this. Um, this is no wrinkle rubber cement, so that's pretty cool. Uh, it's acid-free, photo-safe, easy brush applicator, which you'll see in a second. Um, there are some warnings on it, like don't eat it and don't breathe in the fumes too much. I have a ceiling fan going that'll whip the air around a little bit so it doesn't settle right by my face. The fumes, that is. Um, I have craft supplies everywhere, so I might bonk into the camera a couple times trying to get this all done. So as you can see, I'm brushing some of this glue off the brush so it doesn't just go everywhere. Take one of these cards and just start putting this rubber cement right along the edges. Now the great thing about rubber cement is that it's not, I believe it's not toxic to get it on your skin. It just kind of balls up and uh, comes right off. So want to get that all over the and then you just put this on the paper kind of arrange it all nice and you can see I have a little excess around the edges I have a handy dandy Kleenex and I just take around the edges and get the excess glue off Get the excess glue off. Now we're going to do 
Rubber cement is funny. It flows a little weird. So, we look a little funny. But see, it has a little brush applicator. It's actually, this stuff is actually pretty, pretty good to have around. You can do all sorts of neat stuff with it. It's a very good adhesive. So I believe they even have repositionable rubber scent, maybe. So maybe that's in the works. I don't know. I'll have to look it up. They do have re repositionable double-sided tape, too, but you really don't want that when you're making cards. Because uh, that means your paper can fall off. So I'm just getting this put on there nice and make sure you get the edges all taken care of. Oh, my cats are. I bet you Meow is trying to get into Ally Sue's box again. Cats in boxes. Flip this around. So as you can see here, once this card goes on, there's going to be a very wide strip. I think I might use some of that extra uh, paper to make bookmarks with. And I may or may not laminate them and put them in the cards as an extra gift to everyone who's getting a card this year. But we'll see. I have to have to buy a laminating machine first, so I think that would be pretty cool. Getting a laminating machine. I'd probably primarily use it for bookmarks, but Sure, there are other really cool things you can do with it. Put this, line that up. This would be a little bit easier if I had less stuff on this desk, but in preparation for card making and making examples of cards, I uh have everything everywhere. <laughs> so yeah. Yep, so that's Ally C getting all protective of her box. I have a picture up on Instagram of Ally C and Miawa sharing the box. So that's what usually ends up happening after Ally C claims the box is hers. Is that she will share the box. It just takes a little doing on Miao's part to he has to be patient and slowly work his way into the box. It's pretty adorable actually. So like this. So now we have to let these dry for a little bit, um, and then you just take a really nice sharp pair of scissors, I actually have these, these are crafting scissors, stainless steel, I'm sure you can't read that on there, and I put paper here on the handle so I know they were my paper scissors, but they're nice and sharp. They are brand Craftsmart, I think. Yeah, Craft Smart scissors, so very handy. So I'm going to take this and let it dry for a while. Now I'm going to take some of these other cards that I already have finished and cut out and whatnot. I'm going to show you how to you use brush pens on stamps. So. I picked up my colors already. These come in a huge variety of colors. Um, these are just generic ones. Let's see, all different colors. This might actually be two sets, but lots of different colors of brush pen. Um, and I've had them for a really long time. So I'm just grateful they still work, to be honest. So here's my Christmas tree stamp. You'll see on the back it's well loved. 
I've stamped it in green a lot. This year I decided I'd do something a little bit more complicated, which is why I'm starting so early. I have a lot of Christmas cards to make. Um, I try to send them out to friends and family alike. And it seems like my Christmas list just gets bigger every year. So first we'll start out by taking the cap off and putting some pink on here. So put the pink up on the heart. Now for the life of me, I can't remember where I got the stamp. So I would say you can take any stamp that has, or any tree stamp that has like a star or a heart on top. It could have ornaments on it. It could have lights on it. And as long as you have, as long as you get some brush pens, you'll be able to fill in the details fairly well with whatever colors you want. You can go to like so then the trunk of the tree is just going to be a nice little brown color. Like this says a stamp in the hand company corporation. It's from California. Can't really read anything else in there. It's kind of blurry. Like I said, the stamp has been well loved. I've used it a lot over the years. Now, as you're brushing the, these, using the brush pens on the stamp, the color tends to dry out as you go along, and all you have to do to reactivate the color is to breathe on it, because your breath has moisture in it. So, Kind of going ah uh, into the stamp. And make sure to press down all the corners and the heart, little trunk. Make sure you push down all the way around and you can kind of roll it back and forth, but not too much because you don't want to make a second impression. So you didn't quite get the corner perfect there, but just trying to show you what it does. But see, now you have three different colors on your stamp. If you, you can also use just a full color ink pad if you don't want to take the time to make multiple colors on this. Like, it'll still turn out just as beautiful if you use one color ink. It'll just go a little bit faster. So we're going to just gonna keep doing these trees here. I was doing the green first, so I'm going to go back to doing that. That way if I get the green on the heart or the trunk, it can just get washed away by the other brush pen. Ooh, that's Piggy talking. Life with cats. Make sure I get this ink all the way into the corners. That may have been the problem before. Squeak, squeak, squeak. That's a very light squeaking sound as you go over the stamp. These are rubber stamps. Another really popular type of stamp are the clear ones, and you can put those on blocks. They're a little bit easier to position if you need to make like multiple images with one stamp or like layers. So that's it's kind of neat. Let's make sure I get a good impression this time. Push that down. Oh, see, that's perfect. See? Let's bring this up a little closer. Yep. Perfect little Christmas tree. Or holiday tree or whatever. this some more. So I don't know what would be more repetitive. Do it cut like rubber cementing all those pieces of paper or doing this over and over and over again. I kind of chose to do this over and over again today. My stack's not that big but it is still going to take a while. So hopefully nobody gets too bored. 
Once this is on YouTube, you can just skip ahead to different parts, so... I may try to list in the YouTube video what's going on at what time. So once you get this part down, you can just skip ahead to the next step. And that way you're not stuck watching the whole video if you don't want to. Of course, you're more than welcome to do that too, but maybe you like listening to me prattle on, I don't know. So, and you can use all sorts of different technique, techniques with these. Uh, my boyfriend pointed out that you can probably use gelatos with these. Uh, so gelatos are rad. Another one. Put that off to the side. These brush pens also dry like super fast. So the one thing with the rubber cement is sometimes it'll make the cards stick together. It's not a huge deal because they just come apart really super easy without ripping the paper at all. So that's pretty cool. All inked up. So these are just generic, probably water based um, brush pens. So they're not going to be waterproof. Uh, well, that's kind of an obvious thing to me because you can blow on it to reactivate it. But other people may not realize that. So if you need to do other things with water, like you need to watercolor your paper before you stamp it or before you use brush pens. I do the watercolor down first and then brush on your stamp and put that on top. Making sure your paper is all dry unless you want kind of a neat watercolory effect to happen. So Ooh, cats are arguing. I might have to go supervise. Let me go supervise. I'll be right back. Well, it seems that I got both of their attention. <laughs> They're both by me now. I was right, though. It was Miawa trying to get in uh, her her box. So he wanted to snuggle with her. She was just not having it right now. So they may continue to argue tonight. They, they don't ever, like it sounds bad, but they don't actually hurt each other. <laughs> She's just making a lot of noise. So, like, this is my box. I don't want you in my box. Just constantly complaining about it. And then they settle down and they end up sleeping together and it's adorable. So. So I'm really sorry. It's, it's not like angry kitties. She's just complaining a lot. You'd think they would behave a little bit better. They just got treats not too long ago.
They do love treats. Yep, they get uh, dry food. They're free fed. And then um, wet food once a day. And then like three treats they get. Sometimes they get a couple more, but it's not too bad. I think if you go to my Instagram, it's uh, Zenith Jade on Instagram, you'll see that uh, Allie C is a wee bit overweight and she's been that way ever since she got fixed. It has to do, probably has to do with hormones. Um, just changing hormones in her body after she got fixed up. And it's just, just kind of been that way for a really long time. So she seems happy and healthy. Doesn't seem to have any other health issues. I keep a close eye on them for that. So, you know, I'm their mommy and I worry. One day, this week or last week, Allie Sue was making a lot of noise and I got, oh yeah, this was last week. I got really worried and made an appointment for her at the vet and it turns out that Angel, one of my other cats, was picking on her. And it's since gotten better. So, she was just trying to tell me that she wasn't having an easy time of it with Angel picking on her all the time. So, so I actually canceled that vet appointment because it wasn't anything serious. So, For which I'm very grateful. <laughs> very, very grateful. Don't need to be needlessly taking the kitties to the vet. It traumatizes them something fierce. Even if they do get treats there, there's just... I took Nyawa to the vet, oh, a year ago or so, and he hid for five days. Wouldn't even come out for wet food. So... Poor little guy. Probably doesn't help that they're all seniors now. So, got old kitties. Resistant to change. So, I can hear Alice purring. You probably can't, but I can. There. Making progress through these. Just takes time. And, you know, like I said, I have so many to do. I started them before the uh, this Twitch stream. So... I've got, oh, let's see, like, I think 70 or so people on my Christmas list, and I'm not quite done compiling it yet. So, speaking of Christmas lists, though, on my Patreon, if you want one of these bad boys, you can uh, back me on Patreon for $5. I added a new tier just so you, everyone, if they wanted a card, you could get one. So and that covers my time of making these and um, supplies and postage. So, because I'll also send them international for the same price as domestic. So, really good deal for international peeps so it 
in uh, January, I don't know if I'm going to be able to offer it for $5 anymore if I continue to make cards every month because the rate of postage is going up again. Uh, I don't remember what it's going up internationally, but it's going up five cents per stamp domestically. So that's, I think, usually the only raise it a cent or two, and this time they're raising it five cents. So kind of makes me sad. I love sending mail, but it's hard to do with the cost of postage stamps going up so much. So. I also have a bit of a postage stamp obsession. I like collecting all the cool ones. Like I don't have an actual collection collection, but like I like sending neat stamps on letters I send. So so I've got the cool eclipse stamps and I got scratch and sniff stamps and the international stamps are almost always cool. So there's that. And then the postcard stamps aren't quite as neat, I don't think. I think right now they're seashells. They were neat birds before. So I thought I was going to be doing postcards for Christmas this year, but um, I couldn't find any postcard blanks that were stamped with the postcard information already at uh, my local hobby shops. Crafton hobby shops. So <sighs> made me a little sad because I really because it's just a little bit more economical to send postcards than full cards. But you know I'm not going <clears> to <throat> complain about it too much because I may include bookmarks this way and they get a really pretty inside this way. So, and because they're sent in an envelope, I can do like cool three dimensional stuff. So, I don't know if you saw, but this square is actually raised up. So, that's pretty cool. We've only got a few more of these to do. That's good. Just pull that open. Probably do the glitter last, I'm thinking. I got some for the snowflakes on the front. Probably do the glitter last. So, because glitter goes everywhere. got several different kinds of glitter over here. I've got some clear and some blue and bluish purple and sparkly AB and the AB stands for Aurora Borealis and it just is like a rainbow finish type of deal. We'll probably do all this stamping first. There we go. Okay, another one. Three more left to go, right? Oh, this is. I had more to do than I thought. They just stacked real well. Usually I do this and like watch TV or listen to music or <clears throat> now I'm doing this and talking to you guys instead, so I recently had coffee with a friend and we talked about cats for like an hour and a half. Pretty much exclusively cats. It was 
can tell I'm a little obsessed. They are cute and fuzzy and very sweet. I just love them. And one of the reasons I don't volunteer in a shelter is because I'd want to bring all the kitties home. And that's very, very hard on me. Just takes a emotional toll to see the kitties there for a really long time or if it's not you know kill shelter, you know. It just makes it really hard. I did try, but Grab the pink, do another heart, spin the stamp around. that down. I think you guys are probably all getting the hang of this now. So Michael's I know for sure has generic brush pens. Um, at least they used to. Like I said I've had mine for a while. I think they were like five or ten dollars for a set of them. So that's not bad at all for craft supplies. Oh yeah, I've only got two left. Can do something else soon. This goes pretty fast if you watch TV at the same time that you're doing it. So I just worry about you guys getting bored with me doing the same thing over and over. You know, you're probably coming and going and checking out a whole bunch of channels at the same time, so. So, yeah, you just kind of have to do this one at a time unless you have multiples of the same stamp. <laughs> So, so this, I think these are a little bit easier to use the brush pens than this the stamp pads that have the multiple colored inks on them. So, because then you have to line up the stamp directly where it got stamped before otherwise the colors will get kind of muddy but with brush pens it just puts on a nice thin coat of color and I think most of it comes off when you stamp the image so And it's really easy to get the color where you want it with the brush pens. So I think I said that before. It's worth repeating. So I thought about doing something really neat with the with the text stamps, like doing like an ombre with the brush pens along the the stamp, but that would take forever 
to do multiples. So instead, one of these days, I'll have to show you how I do uh, paint wood cuts. So I make pretty cool um, magnets and pendants with wood cuts that I paint. So make sure this is good and on there. Well, yay. That's it for that stack. So now we're going to clean this. So I have some paper towel here. Um, you can see it's got some other ink colors on there right now because I've been using it for a while. But so this stuff is called stays on, I think. Yeah, I'll show you guys. This is what the bottle looks like. Um, rub, it says, you can rub this foam thing right up against the rubber stamp. Wipe off excess solution with a damp cloth. Repeat for stubborn stains. So it also says to use in a well-ventilated area and avoid contact with eyes and skin. Wash hands after use. So I'm just going to make sure. Oh, I did get some on my finger. But, uh, so just make sure you're careful with this stuff. It's stamp cleaner is what it is. So just rub this all over. I'm quite liberal with it. It goes a really long way. Keeps the stamps healthy. And you just dot this until it gets clear-ish. See, just, it's nice. All purpose stamp cleaner. And this I got from Hobby Lobby. As you can see, it cost me $4. Um, so that's not too bad. And then I just do this a couple times to make sure the ink's all off. And I just leave it on there to dry. So that's my. I'm going to grab another stack of cards over here. Might as well condense these stacks. So oh. maybe not. Maybe we'll just leave it like this. So we did quite a few in the time that since I started. What? Like 40 minutes ago. But that was also including rubber cementing that one sheet as an example. So, um, we'll just take these. Throw them in a nice little pile. Just trying to get them out of the way. And you can see with the um, the paper I used, the colors on the cards changed. So like it was uh, like an ombre paper with snowflakes on it. So each card is going to be totally unique, which I think is just the best for handmade stuff. I mean, what's the point if it can't be unique, you know? not unique it might as well be made by a factory so we're gonna do I think more jingle all the ways um, I, I have some more I have making spirits merry and bright happy holidays merry Christmas does this season to be jolly I wanted one with snowflakes on it so I think there are three here make the making spirits merry and bright and happy holidays also have snowflakes but I like this one because it kind of got the curly cues and just really cute. So I have Memento ink pads, Dewdrop. They're just like a little teardrop shape and they're great. This one's Cottage Ivy. I'm going to use this one on the stamp. Um, these inks are great. I think 
They're fade, re fade resistant dye ink. So, so that's pretty cool. Um, so these you could use, I think, with watercolors and watercolor over them, but don't quote me on that. I'd have to try it out first. I haven't done anything that fun in quite a while, so set this right there. So I want to put this right here. Press down, press down. See, there you go. It can go all the way. So now we have to do it on these, like, huge amount of cards. And I won't do all of them because that would take, like I said, forever. Um, and I want to show you how to finish up the rest of the card. Jingle all the way. Should have some Christmas music playing. <laughs> Don't shoot me for saying that. I know it's not even Thanksgiving yet, but like this is only, I, th I think this is only like 44 cards, so, or 40, no, it's 48, so I still have another 40 to go <laughs> before I'm done with cards for this year, and I think I may use might make cards with two different designs. So I might have to pick up some more paper. So if you have any suggestions for that, um, like neat papers or whatever, you can just drop me a link or tell me. Actually, I don't know if you can drop links in this chat. Maybe shut off. But you can at least tell me what you're thinking, so. That's our fourth one. That's turning out pretty good. Do a fifth one. We might do ten of these and then I'll move on to something else. So it's like really hard to over ink with the these dewdrop ink pads as long as you don't press too hard. Um, like you just have to lightly tap it. I don't know if you can see how light I'm going, but lightly tap. Just it's neat. And the great thing about the dewdrop ink pads too is that the edges like the pad is raised up so you never have to worry about the ink pad being uh, too small for your project. So, and these are just really high quality inks. So, jingle all the way. Open this up. So I wanted a nice bright color for the text. I thought about doing, I think I mentioned this already, like an ombre effect across the stamp, but it would just take forever doing it on all these cards when I'm already doing the tree with the brush pen. So. And I was kind of torn too. Like I could use like purple, pink, and blue, which will match like the snowflakes. But purple, blue, green, and pink maybe. Oh, I might have to give it a try anyway. See how it turns out. So that's kind of exciting. I'm going to good push. 
See how many of these are we done? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So three more. Three more. So you're going to want a good stable surface to stamp on. So it doesn't like jostle move while you're stamping because then you might get like a double impression or it might be blurry the, the stamped image so I think most kitchen tables would be pretty good for that um, can't imagine everybody has a studio to work in so My stepdad actually built me these tables, which was super nice of him. They've got um, holes in the back of the tables for cords of stuff to go through. So all my lamp cords, instead of going across the top of the table, go through the hole underneath the table, which I thought was pretty awesome. So they don't get in the way. I think I have to do one more. We'll do one more anyway. So now you may get messy working with ink and stamps and rubber cement and just par for the course. I mean, I guess if you don't want to get your hands dirty, you can wear gloves. So. There. I'll do the rest of these later. Let's see, huge stack of these. This is about 30 more. Set these to the side. Now I'm going to clean off this stamp using that stays on stuff. Put this over here. Just make sure I get in all the little cracks and crevices here. There. So I believe I bought, when did I buy these? I bought these at Michael's last year or the year before and they came in the set of five. So I was really excited about that because they're great sentiments for Christmas cards, of course. And the fact that I get to an assortment and get to choose which ones I want to use is pretty cool. So now we're going to start stamping some snowflakes on the inside to make it look all cool looking and because the main snowflake colors of the papers are pink, blue, and purple, um, I'm going to use pink snowflakes to kind of match the heart of the top of the tree and it just kind of pink and green go well together. So, so let's see an example card real quick. See how I did this exactly. So I did the bigger one over here and the smaller one right here. So, we'll start with the bigger one. And as you can see, for the most part, I kind of do it like industrial-like. <laughs> like, I do everything I need to do on all the cards all at once. And then I move on to the next step. So, 
Let's put that there. Put this one inked up. Usually I would do all of this one on all of these first, but because these are all stacked up together, we're just going to do them, do them this way. See? Little pink snowflakes. Put that over there. Big snowflake. Right here. Little snowflake. goes a little bit faster when you're just doing it with a there solid color and this right here so yeah I think this is a really nice pink color I'll tell you which one it is in just a second this one's angel pink so, it's kind of appropriate for me. I love angels. There's that. That's two cards. Not that. Let's see here. Put that stamp on there. So they're all going to be slightly different. I'm not using a ruler or anything to measure where the snowflakes go. I'm just trying to put them where I think they'll look good. Because these trees moved a little bit for every card. They're not in exactly the same spot. So there. I'm using quite a bit of force to stamp these down. Shake, shake, shake. Grab two again. Really excited about doing the snowflakes for the front, so I apologize if I'm hurting a little, but seriously, you guys should get the hang of this pretty fast. I don't know if you guys can hear the OD or not, but that is a dog barking. Stamp up here. She just kind of flows. Whoop. I had a bunch of, I had picked out a bunch of different memento colors um, in case I decided I didn't want to do glitter on the front of the cards. So, yeah, there's that. And there's all sorts of cool stuff you can do with stamps and paper and ink. I might try to show you a couple different things you can do. So your cards don't look exactly like my cards. I do not remember where I got these snowflakes, which is rather unfortunate. I know they came in a set, I think. So. Shake, shake, shake. 
There's actually two here. I'm hoping to at least show you how to do these, this whole card today. I might do different cards. Oh, I mentioned that already. Different um, design for the next 40 or so cards that I need to do. I actually might need to do more cards than that. I was going to mention, if I haven't already, um, Oh, I did already, but I'll mention it again. My Patreon, I'm offering a $5 tier now, so you can get one of these. Um, or the other design. It will be up to me which one you get, I think. But um, Yeah, so that would be cool. I, I can send you a Christmas card. Holiday card, whatever. So... Kind of exciting. There. So this, like these two snowflakes are done for now. Got all these. See how many we did? All these are done and ready to get the fronts done on them. So. Close these up. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Well, I only meant to do ten of them. I guess I did twelve. So there's that. So we're going to put those to the side for just one second. Now I really have to thank my boyfriend here. He cut all these squares for me because I was busy working on the putting the paper on the cards. And so he cut me 80 of these little squares. He used 8.5 by 11 inch sheets of cardstock. Just plain white cardstock. So it's nice and thick uh, and sturdy. So, so he cut out me all these little squares and then I asked him to round the corners and he got a blister with my corner rounder <laughs> it was like the push type instead of the maybe I should show you the corner rounder so you get a better idea but he didn't do all of them but he did sustain an injury doing most of them and then I finished them off I'm like oh my gosh how did you do this many without you know anyway it was it was kind of funny so I'm going to grab a sheet of cardstock. Sheet of cardstock to work on. I'm going to move everything out of the way. Scissors, brush pens. No! Going everywhere. Those right there. So I'm going to grab one of these little squares. You can use a paper cutter um, to cut these. I don't know what brand I used right offhand. Let's see. Oh, Fiskars. Fiskars. So this is. The paper cutter it has a handy dandy ruler that comes out of the side. It clicks into place. I'm not gonna do that right now. So and then little rubber feet to keep it from moving. And this is the cutting opens up. It's pretty cool. So and that you can get from any craft supply store. So I think you should and other online stores too I'm sure so I'm gonna grab something 
special that I use with the glitter. So I got these in a set. These in a set. Um, this is called Acid Acid Free Perfect Medium. It's made by Ranger. It's a glue pad. So now it's probably specifically for use with these Perfect Pearls Ranger. They're like Pearlax powders. Well, that's a brand, but it's a it's a mica powder for crafting. And um, but I'm gonna use glitter with these instead. I have so many cards to do and the uh, the mica powders are pretty expensive. So um, lots of cards to do. I don't know if the mica powder will last for all the cards. Um, so we're just going to use glitter with the Perfect Medium Acid Free Ranger glue pad. Uh, I have some glitter here. More little containers of glitter. Here's some more glitter. Here's some like glitter flocking. That might look really cool. So for starters, we'll just take this right here, just tap it all over the snowflake. See, now the snowflake is good and sticky. Let me put the snowflake down as close to the middle as we can get it. Press it down firmly. Open up this glitter. We're going to use this purpley pink stuff first. And just sprinkle it on. So there's, I'm going to let that sit for a minute so the glue sets, and while that's doing that, grab another one of these sheets of paper, and glue the stamp again. Oop, I'm gluing everything, apparently. Better fingers over here. Okay. Yeah, that dries fairly fast, so put this in as in close into the middle as I can. Push that down. As you can see it kind of stuck there. Glitter that up. Do the same thing with that one. that one up. More glitter. Glitter, glitter everywhere. Should I try to contain my glitter messes, messes by putting them on a piece of cardstock and then saving the glitter for later? Um, that's kind of hard with this one. This one does not come open at the top anywhere. So most of these containers, you can open them up and pour extra glitter back into the tube. So it may be a little sad to find out that this one didn't have that capability. It's like when you use glitter. You can still kind of save it, like you could save it in a different container or whatever, but it's not going back into that tube, unfortunately. So, I think I have a bigger pad of this glue. Um, 
adhesive, but I'm not entirely sure where I put it right off the top of my head. So. But they do come in bigger pads. Like, they'll be like regular ink pad size. So, I'll show you some of those. Stick. So it's right there. Now here comes the fun part. I'm going to do one down here and use some of this other glitter that's going to come off of these cards because it's only going to stick in the shape of the snowflake. So. There's that. There's that one. It's like magic. There we go. That one's covered in glitter. Got a little glitter here. Pick up another one of these. But as you can see, the snowflakes are pretty well defined. So, there's probably some sort of setting spray I can use on them so the glitter doesn't fall off, but I don't think we're going to do that today. A little bit of the glue pad came off. There's that one. This one right here. So we've gotten. I'm going to throw this stuff away. Eight snowflakes done so far. We only need to do four more. So we'll keep these separate. And gently lay these on top of each other. There are six. Okay. Should we try a different color of glitter, do you think? We can try it. I don't know how well it'll show up on the white with the white glitter. We can find out though. Try the white flocking. And open up this one. I have to be kind of careful with this one. There's that. We need to do four of these. It's one of my cats getting into something. 
furiously getting into something. So it's no huge loss if the if the white ones don't turn out very good. I'll just remake them in this purpley blue color. Indigo as it were. So I may have to go get some more purple glitter though. Because I don't think I have enough to do. See, not a whole lot left in there. Not quite enough to do 70, 80 cards with, I don't think. One more. I actually don't use glitter all that often. I just thought it would look really great with these cards. So, I don't think I was too off the mark there. Cover this up so it doesn't dry out. Once again, Acid Free Perfect Medium by Ranger. So, just it's a little itty bitty square. So, we're going to take this and we're going to use the stays on stuff again and clean off the glue. This actually works to getting this glue off really well. Probably water soluble glue on the uh, perfect medium. So, even if it's not, this stuff works great. So, put that down there. Take a look here. Oh, not sticky. There. Now let's take a look at the rest of these snowflakes. So this glitter right here is like goner. There's that. There's that one. Those turned out very nice. Here, I'll bring them up closer to you. There. Let's see how these white whitish ones turned out. Oh, those didn't turn out too bad. Can you see that? No, yeah, not too shabby. Definitely a different effect than the purple indigo. Still noticeable. The tiny cat hair in my glitter. There. Now we'll just. Most of the times I would have saved this whitish, whitish powder, but. And put it back in the little glitter container but since it's on the same piece of paper as this stuff I'm not gonna bother put these over in the stack get the stuff out of the way just 
So now what we're going to do is these are called dots. They're little, tiny little adhesive dots and they're awesome. So we're going to take one of these cards, just make sure I got it going oriented the right way. I'm going to push through these dots right off this sheet of paper. And then you're going to adhere one of the dots in each corner. So these do come in different sizes and shapes. But this will make the, the snowflake image pop off the paper a little, making it three-dimensional. I just thought that would look the absolute coolest. It's not going to stay put. There we go. Angel wants more treats. That's why she's making noise. Just orient this in the corner. Push it down. Well, that looks mighty fine. See? There's another finished card. Just have to do the back now. I'll have to dig out my stamps to do the uh, handmade by image. I'm not entirely sure where I put them. They're around somewhere. I have quite a few stamps. So. And they're not organized all that well. I have them in different uh, Ziploc baggies organized by season for the most part and then the ones that are just like background stamps or everyday stamps or fairy stamps or mermaid stamps they're not sorted by season or holiday or anything so just put that down right there see? You can't see the snowflake all that well, can you? Snowflake. It's a very different effect with the, the white snowflakes on there. I think I will have to get more purple. More purple glitter. Probably go to Michael's and get that. They have cool glitters there. We also have to pick up more of these dots. I seriously doubt this one sheet is going to make 80 cards. One, two, three. Yeah, each line will make three. Two of these little squares adhere to the card. Might actually pick up some square dots and put it in the middle. Just kind of line that up by eye. That's one card. the dots. They're a little square. I've been working on these little squares for a while too. That's why there's such a big stack here. Wanted to get a bunch done as examples for you guys. So I'm going to peel off the little backings of these adhesive dots. You can also see on my Instagram some cool uh, 
other cool projects I've been working on on Twitch. I think I posted some uh, Christmas jewelry I've been working on. So that's exciting. I'm getting ready to do some some fairs in December. I don't think I have any scheduled for November. But I'm making some holiday jewelry. Not too much of it, but some. It's it's fun and unique, so I think each piece of jewelry I made is one of a kind so far for the Christmas stuff. So, and then I'm going to make some little jingle bracelets for children to wear. So they got a five inch diameter for for wrists. Yeah. Can't see that one too well either, I don't think. Yeah, that one's kind of off center, but so be it. It's just, yeah, that's just one card. Oh, there. My cat Piglet wanted to say hi. Hear that there. Yeah, so I'm pretty excited about these. I think I think the they'll go over well. So I have to get a laminating machine before I can do bookmarks, but if I do that I might put that on Twitch too. Although it would be repetitive, but at least I could give you a quick how-to on how to make laminate stuff. There. see glitter everywhere. You gotta be prepared to wear the glitter you're using, I think. I could have also done like a embossing powder and that would have given it like a glossy raised appearance. Um, not my favorite thing to use though, you have to use a high heat heat gun. Um, so and I haven't quite mastered embossing powder yet, so. It could have been a disaster if I tried. Which probably would have been funny, but. I'll give it a try sometime and show you guys how it goes. That one's all done. So I gotta pick up more dots and glitter. that. These dots are very sticky. So don't be surprised if they stick to your hands as much as they want to stick to the paper. Just kind of have to maneuver it and be quick. Four dots. And these also probably aren't going to go exactly in the same spot in every card. That's okay. That's what makes it unique and fun. This one's nice purpley and pink. 
here's a blue and purple one. I think these purple snowflakes, indigo snowflakes, go really well with this paper. There's that. That one's all done. Let me get some of this glitter off my table. Glitter all over my hands. Can you see that? Maybe. Yeah, so embossing powder is pretty cool. I have to practice with it a little first, though, before I go on Twitch with it. I don't want to give you guys any wrong information as much as possible. Try to keep limit stuff. Well, I think I know what I was thinking of when I was thinking of the repositional rubber cement. That may not exist. I was at Hobby Lobby the other day and I did see repositionable glue. So I don't think that stuff was rubber cement though. But it makes sense why I was, why I was thinking of it though. these little adhesive protective bits off the adhesive yeah I hope you guys are having a great Friday night watching all things twitch tonight Maybe before you go out, maybe you're staying in. Regardless, I hope you do have a good night. We're almost done here. Almost. One last snowflake to go. And I'll give you a quick once over on how they all look finished and so one other thing that I will be doing with um, these cards is I'm going to be stamping the envelopes too and you can stamp the back on the flap or on the front where you would put your a well I guess it depends where you put your address I, I think I'm going to put mine on the front of the envelope where I'll put my address and then uh, if you put your address on the backs on the flap you can uh, put a little snowflake stamp underneath your address so I think that would look pretty cute I may change the design up a little bit because the glitter isn't sticking real well to that adhesive right now, but it still looks like a snowflake. Just very light. 
Alright. I will show you all these that we've done. You can see the variety of colors in here. All the little snowflakes cards. And then show you the inside one more time. It's got two little pink stamp snowflakes and a tree and a sentiment. Then I'll sign here. So, yeah, it should be good. Well, I'm going to throw up uh, an intermission where it glists my legs to different things. And then I think I'll let you guys go. So you guys have a great night. Take it easy. Make stuff. And I'll see you on Monday.